have to say, I think rapid almost comes a lot comes with this deep psychosis. In the course of the next few minutes, I am going to prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is a non-physical world, a metaphysical realm that exists beyond the physical material world that we know. A few moments later. Science explains this issue of consciousness by saying that consciousness is a byproduct of the brain. Yep. Consciousness is an epiphenomenon, which sounds like a very fancy word. Sounds like it must mean something high and mighty and fancy and uh, must have some truth to it. But that is just a um, highfalutin way of saying Science uses some long words that I don't fully understand. I'm going to simply say, oh, that's just highfalutin. You gotta say, ah, oh, yes, energy, consciousness, and vibration when it's your stuff, but if someone says something which isn't, you know, plain game, well, that's highfalutin. Um, highfalutin way of saying that, according to scientists, the brain and brain waves, electromagnetic waves from the brain, causes consciousness somehow. How about new, you crazy Dutch bastard? Slight cringe there. You're almost suggesting there's a, a mind field. The idea of a functioning brain, a neural network in effect, a neurons operating as a network connected by synapses, and functioning through various centers in a way that represents consciousness. You're dealing with something very complex indeed as far as what is mind as re in regard to how the brain functions. And it is still um, an expanding frontier, a massively expanding frontier, how the brain operates. It's not fully described by psychology. Uh, neurology has offered some very interesting uh, thoughts and experiments, solid data as far as this. And I think ignoring that and other relating sciences um, would be a massive mistake if you really care about what's actually true. The problem is that this is a logical fallacy, as they say. This, this should be good. As anyone who has taken a critical thinking class can tell you, this is a faulty argument. To say that because consciousness and the brain exist synonymously, therefore means that the brain is causing consciousness, is kind of like saying, it isn't simply a claim put out there. Let, let's see what he says. I'm gonna see what he says. That my house causes my car. How about new? Not the same thing. I don't actually have a house or a car, but if I did have... You don't deserve one. Both of those. Then a house and a car oftentimes exist synonymously in the same place at the same time. Well, I theorize then my house causes my car. How does that sound? That sounds like a failed hypothesis, actually, but... Uh... Pray, do continue. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So it is with this argument. The argument you strawmanned. That because the brain and consciousness exist anonymously, then therefore the brain causes consciousness. There is a considerable bulk of evidence which confirms the functionality of the brain directly relates to the outward manifestation of mind. You don't deal with that issue by simply rounding it down to, oh, mind and brain coexist, therefore brain create mind, therefore I can debunk that by saying it's like a house and a car. Your argument is ridiculous in both cases. The problem is you're using one ridiculous argument to try and refute the idea that mind and brain coexist and that they must be tied together. So you're now going to suggest that there's probably some kind of broader idea of consciousness and that is the correct one, and therefore it proves metaphysics. The logical fallacy is, because A and B exist uh, together, therefore A causes B. It's more like, because the brain exists and manifests certain things in terms of its function that we call mind, it confirms those functions as a byproduct of the mind. Those functions can be inhibited through damage or alteration of those pathways within the brain. You can cause hallucinations, you can cause uh, tiredness, uh, heightened uh, energy in terms of how the brain functions. You can affect the brain directly and it directly affects the mind, how it manifests, how a person thinks, their emotional state, how functional they actually are. These things are massively tied together. They are, by definition, part of the same function. B could just as well cause A. They could be entirely independent. No. 
they're demonstrated as being part of the same process. You could have some other process or extension, but it is not demonstrated in any way. But please continue to embarrass yourself. Get a deep-rooted psychology.